Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about Tula Pink Everglow art kits. Plastic storage containers where you can pre-cut your fabrics and have them at the ready whenever you're ready to work on your next sewing project. A reminder about the August challenge. New bag packs that I've added to the shop as well as coordinating corks and zipper tapes. Uh, tonight will be part one of what I did over the summer. The book review will be for a book called Zigzag Rope Sewing Projects. In tonight's bag lab, I will be discussing how to turn a bag into a sling backpack and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. We're back. Thanks so much for joining me for our first live show back since our break at the beginning of June. It's great to be back. I've been looking forward to the show all week. Thank you so much for joining me for the show. Um, thank you, Clovis. Clovis says, welcome back, Lawson family. Kim's watching over in Australia. Um, hey, Melissa. Melissa's always tuning into the show. Um, also, Cheryl's watching from South Carolina, so welcome, everyone. Um, if you're new around here um, on Sundays, I always reserve some time for a question and answer section. It's a live Q&A. So if you have a question for me, you can enter it in the comments at any time during the show. Uh, Danny will be looking out for your questions, and he saves them in a little queue. And they can be a general sewing question, question about a notion or tool, bag making question, maybe you have a question about my sewing history, feel free to ask your question in the comments at any time during the show. Um, and my usual, um, I have my usual spam reminder. Um, we will never send you, if you're watching on Facebook, we never send private messages on Facebook. Um, so even if you see a private message with an avatar that looks like a Sew Sweetness avatar, um, that should be spam. Usually they're asking for things like credit card information, um, asking for you to wire or transfer money to claim a prize, other information that they might be asking for is address or phone number. Don't reply to those messages, Re report and block them. If you're watching over on YouTube, if you've left a comment on the show and you see a reply, again, it usually has an avatar that looks like So Sweetness, but um, asking for similar informa information such as sending money to claim a prize, go ahead and report or block that as well. Um, I always verbally announce the winner's names of any giveaway live on the show and we'll also have them, um, the winner's name in the description of the show. Um, we don't have a winner to announce tonight just because we've been on the break and I kind of left that last June show um, without a giveaway, but going forward, we will have the winner's names in the description of the show as well. And also another reminder, everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. So um, my first section of the show is usually the notion of the week. Today I have something a little bit different than a notion, but I thought it was cool and I wanted to share it nonetheless. <clears throat> Danny's going to switch over to the overhead camera. I ordered for the first time Tula Pink offered art prints of some of her fabric designs. I don't know if these are still in stock. I've linked to it in the description just in case they are, but these are art prints from her Everglow fabric line. And it's <clears throat> four prints in the collection. I think she also had the option to buy a single print, but if you got the the full pack, it was the four prints. So I just wanted to share them with you. <clears throat> you may have seen some of You may have seen some of her drawings and sketches on her videos, on her social media, and I was super excited to get my hands on these four because I definitely plan on hanging them in my sewing room and all the color. I'm not sure if the neon is quite coming up on camera as bright as it is in person, but all the color is a really bright neon. Basically to go with the, the colors in Everglow. Love the drafts. I would have to say, huh? Maybe the giraffes or the line are my favorite. They're just so detailed, but of course they're all fantastic. 
Hippo is definitely the cutest. <clears throat> um, but these come really well packed, uh, mounted on, well, not mounted, but backed with cardboard to protect them from shipping and um, all ready to frame and, and hang in your favorite room or your sewing room. Um, they were available on the I Heart Tulip Pink website. Again, I'm not sure if they're sold out at this point, but um, perhaps keep your eye peeled for future releases for our prints like that. I certainly am crossing my fingers that she comes out with some more prints in the future from other and different fabric lines, but I just thought they were so cool and really fantastic. So I think in a recent newsletter I mentioned a few months ago someone mentioned on the live show that they like to cut out fabrics for projects and they might have maybe five projects cut out at a time and they keep them in storage bins so everything's organized. So I decided to do that this summer with not only my bag projects but also my quilt projects and it's working fantastic. So basically whenever the mood strikes me because I do like to cut out fabric for projects as well. Whenever the mood strikes me I will cut out the fabric for the whole project. Um, if it's a quilt it'll just be the fabric. If it's for a bag it'll be the fabric and the interfacing and keep it organized with a, you know the pattern inside the box and all of the the cut out fabrics and so here are I've got four quilts cut out and I've got also some bags and as you can see I've got everything cut and nicely laid in the storage boxes. It's a really great idea because now there's nothing preventing me from working on a sewing project because everything's all ready for me so whenever I'm ready to sew my fabrics are ready. So I'm just going to pop open, I guess I'll pop a couple of them, maybe just one of them open just so you can see what I did. This is one of my quilted ones. Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera really quick. So these are just 12 inch by 12 inch clear art bin storage containers. I've linked to them in the description and I've got the pattern here. I've got all the, the fabric cut out and usually I have a little bit of spare fabric. So what I've been doing because I worked on a quilt earlier this spring and I didn't finish it right away and I don't know what happened. I think I lost some fabric along the way so I ended up having to purchase some extra fabric just because I was short on my final border. And so I've learned a lesson to save all of the either the bigger scraps or the extra fabrics which are these right here just in case I miscut something or I run a little bit short I'll have the fabrics ready because if you're cutting out fabric and not getting it to it for a few months there's a chance that something will end up going missing so I thought this was a really great suggestion I'm sorry I forgot uh, I did not write down who made that great suggestion at the time I think it was maybe one of the live comments but it was fantastic and it's working really well for me so thank you so much uh for making that recommendation it will surely keep me really organized. I see Rob says, um, happy Sunday everyone. So happy to be back. Best birthday present ever. Happy birthday to you. I hope you had a fantastic day. Hope the weather was nice for you. You did something fun. Maybe got a little bit of sewing in. And um, thanks for tuning into the show on your birthday. Um, a reminder about the August challenge. I know it's creeping toward the end of August, but there's still a few days left. I've linked to the August challenge in the description in case you are perhaps in the middle of sewing your August challenge project or you would like to sew something last minute. The link is in the description. If you have, if you ever have any trouble submitting your photo for any of the challenges, you can always email me or Bronwyn. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Bronwyn's is bronwyn at sosweetness.com. Either one of us would be happy to get that photo uploaded for you and um, we'll have another pro uh, another challenge coming up uh, for September 1st. All right, so over the summer we've added a bunch of new backpacks to the shop and my mom chose some coordinating cork fabrics and zipper tapes. So I'm going to show you a few of those and Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera. The link to the backpacks is... Um, in the description in case you're interested in checking out any of these. So this is one of my favorite all-time prints. Um, Katarina Rochella is the designer and this is sort of a, it's upside down, this is sort of a recoloring of her initial print that came out years ago. Love the birch trees, love the little birds and I paired it with, I'm a big fan of text prints so I paired it with 
um, this great text print um, in a coordinating color. And I, we pulled a few corks to match. Um, and these corks are also linked in the backpack product listing. So this is navy, which is quite dark, but I thought it paired nicely with that color over there. Um, this one is for, I think, a different print. Um, the light gray would also look fantastic with this fabric. And then a few zipper tape options um, we've got over here as well. And this one, this gray and white striped uh, zipper tape with the silver coil is actually a new addition to the shop. Um, the striped tapes are doing really well, so I wanted to add sort of a more neutral color to go along with that. Um, another one of my favorite all-time prints in a different uh, coloring, also designed by Katerina Rochella. Um, again, text print, animals, it's got sort of uh, doily overlays. And I, I paired it with this other print from Art Gallery Fabrics that makes me think of um, a forest scene. And so I thought these were both great. I like that they're both in neutral colors. And then some... Again, some coordinating corks to go with them. I thought the teal looked really nice, even though it's not the exact same color, but it's kind of a dark color, kind of to bounce off some of the neutrals. And then again, some of the same zipper tapes over here to go with this one as well. And also, I wanted to mention another new zipper tape, um, light brown and dark brown striped zipper with a antique brass coil. Right, so let me get some of these out of the way and also so Tula Pink's most recent fabric line is uh, Nightshade Deja Vu and my mom pulled a bunch of zipper tapes to go with them um, we do still have a few backpacks left or if you've already gotten your Nightshade Deja Vu uh, my mom actually left these labeled just because there were so many zipper tapes floating around but um, the pink and sort of the Danny what would you call this shade like a greenish blue like a light aqua. Light, so that kind of bounces off this color in the, the fabric as well. Mind me vice colors. Oh, really? Those work. Um, so this is one of the main florals from the fabric line. And actually tons of the zipper tapes go with, with this just because this fabric has so many different colors in it. So I've got all these labeled. This one's not labeled, but this is the lizard. And this is jam. <laughs> all right, and let me pop. Uh, I have one more of the Tula Pink Nightshade fabrics up here. Okay, so because both of these prints with the faces have a lot of the same colors. This one's upside down. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and just lay, lay these out and you can reference the, the color names if you'd like. If any of them catch your eye. So this one, let me slide this one up. So this one kind of bounces off the color in the hair, um, but I'm looking forward to adding some more zipper tape shades of colors for the fall and winter. So if there's a particular color that you're looking for, feel free to email me anytime. Again, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Danny's going to pop it up on the screen right now. Thank you, Danny. And then I've got two more backpacks to share on camera. I'll do that really quick. Um, just because we had these in the newsletter as well, but I also wanted to share them on the show just in case you missed the newsletter. I see what colors you're showing right there. Thank you. Um, this is the rose gold cork. This is the natural. Um, fawn would also work well. Fawn is kind of more of a flat color, similar color to the natural. And then this is bittersweet, and this is the balsam zipper tape. What fabric name is that? Uh, this is Rancho Relaxo. Um, all the backpacks are linked to in the description. And then I've got one more. This was kind of a pretty blush floral. I liked the bright color. I always try to pick one that I think will look great for um, an exterior of a bag and a lining of a bag. And so while we didn't have exact colors to what's in the fabric, I thought these three corks looked really nice, um, especially this Dynasty cork. This is one of our newer colors. And then 
Um, our Wisteria Zipper Tape, which is a really great seller. <sighs> Carnation? No. The name's escaping me, although I do have it linked to in the product listing for the backpack. Uh, but again, all the links are in the in the comments, and we're actually adding some more backpacks to the shop um, later in September. All right, so I wanted to share a little bit about what I did over the summer. I guess this is part one. Um, obviously, we did not have completely off of work. We just had off from doing the live shows over the summer. Um, so we were still answering emails, shipping orders, all of that. But I had a couple main projects that I focused on over the summer. And um, I hope you don't mind. I typed it up before the show just because I am not a, I guess I'm not a good speaker off the cuff. So I just thought uh, this way I won't miss anything. So I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to go ahead and read this uh, little note that I typed up about my uh, gardening adventures this summer. Um, so this year, as well as the previous two years, um, as you know, we've taken a hiatus from our weekly live shows. During my previous summer breaks from the shows, um, I worked even harder than ever designing new patterns, but this year's summer break only resulted in one and a half new sewing patterns. Um, I wanted to try something different this summer, something I've not done before, and so I mostly focused on two things as far as personal growth, and here's the first. I'll talk about the second uh, on a later show. So I started native gardening three years ago, which means planting things that are naturally occurring in Illinois where we live, and even specifically Northern Illinois. So my first year, I desperately tried to find a native garden design service since I felt really out of my league. I really knew really nothing about gardening, but I found none that would service my area. So they would all service like nearby areas, but not my specific area, which was a little bit frustrating. So the first year I mostly planted pre-planned kits um, you get a selection of plants with a graphic design sheet showing what configuration to plant them in. And I did my best, but clearly I had no idea what I was doing. There's one particular patch at the back of the property that I know for certain I planted a selection of plants, but none survived that I can see. My best guess from what I recall of what I did was a combination of not enough initial watering, as well as, I know we have voles here, um, I know they ate they had to have eaten some of them because they really like um, one plant in particular. It's called a blazing star, and I had a lot of those planted. I've improved my watering since then, so new transplants will get watered for the first two months, maybe two to three times a week, unless it rains a good amount, and the new shrubs I'll, I'll water once a week. And then for me, just for me personally, after the two months, they're usually on their own, although I have been selective watering um, the new oak trees. And um, in June, we had a stretch of about 21 days with no rain and the established plants just sung in all their glory. So year two, which was last year, I started planting plants in flats of 38 or 50, all of a single plant species. And this served me better because I could plant in groups or lines. And last year, I, I just put as many things in the ground as I could. And um, I would say last year was the year of the auger. So with Danny's help, I discovered I could plant a huge amount of plugs, which are young plants, in a short amount of time. So an auger is basically an attachment that you add to a drill. And Danny was basically just drilling me all these holes. So he made perfect size holes and I could just drop my little plug in the hole and just kind of make sure there's, you know, it's nice and snug in there. I'm not as good with the auger, so I generally have to kind of drill a hole and kind of shovel it a little bit deeper and wider, but he does a really good job with the auger. So 2023 is year three for me, um, and this year was the year of the shrub. I still planted plants, and I also planted two white oak trees, um, but this year I've top, topped off at planting nearly 40 shrubs. My mother-in-law taught me how to prepare the holes for the shrubs and how to get them started, so now I can plant several shrubs in a few hours. And these are one gallon shrubs, so not huge things, but just the right amount for one person to dig. I'm mostly planting two or three of the same thing, mostly because some of the shrubs need two or three multiples in order to produce fruit or nuts. Um, I have a fenced portion of my yard, but outside the fence, I would consider it more of a natural and wooded area. And I try my best to choose things based on the area. For example, the more natural areas, I feel fine choosing plants that form hedgerows or that take up space. 
Some of the shrubs that I planted this year are New Jersey tea and Northern bush honeysuckle, which are great for more like ornamental areas of the property, um, as well as others like steeple bush, um, low bush blueberry, American hazelnut, elderberry, prairie willow, which is not a tree. Prairie willow is the, the shrub version. Uh, purple flowering raspberry, high bush cranberry, St. John's wort, and snowberry. Um, everything provides a service to the land and its inhabitants, and so in a way I feel like a sort of a utilitarian gardener. Uh, for example, I planted partridge pea, and it's a legume and fixes soil nitrogen. Some of them provide berries or nuts to birds and mammals, and others are host plants for various butterflies and moths. I only have a small area that's considered sand, at least as far as I've come across so far. And there I've planted lupine, which is um, only lives in sand, and it's uh, the only host plant for an endangered butterfly called the Carner Blue. Um, so a few things that I've learned is sometimes I choose wrong. Um, each plant requires different light and soil, and some plants like a variety of conditions. Some plants are very specific, and sometimes I choose wrong, but I won't learn until later years um, when plants don't come back, as I learned from my very first year. Um, let's see. The other day I let my dog outside and he sat on the back steps and I watched as sort of a Disney movie unfolded. A squirrel and a rabbit under the tree, goldfinches were hanging off the cup plant and um, other plants pulling out seeds, a hummingbird whizzed by, collecting bugs in a tree and flying down to collect nectar from the butterfly weed. Um, I actually stopped putting out my hummingbird feeders. I used to put out quite a lot and, you know, cleaning them every day in the summer. Um, but since I sort of feel more confident that I have a variety of things blooming um, that they will utilize throughout the season, then that's my reasoning for taking it down. I actually have some things coming out, you know, October, November, because some of them will be migrating through my area. A few years ago, I actually had a hummingbird at, at my feeder in the first week in November. And so I feel great that I'll have some plants still blooming for them if any of them come through that late. Um, some areas I have sort of uh, aggressive plants planted together because I spend a lot of time considering the right plants in the right place and so I have aggressive sort of to duke it out per se and you know plant like things with like other like things and another thing that I learned as far as like how I like to garden is that blank space for me equals weeds um, and so I feel like it's a double-edged sword because everything takes time to grow bigger. Um, so for me, it doesn't make sense to plant, say, you know, I have all my newly planted shrubs are on the small side. It doesn't make sense to plant plants next to the shrub because in a year or two, the shrub will sort of overtake that area. But in the meantime, I need to keep the weeds back and, until the shrub or the plants can grow and fill in the space. So. Um, spent a lot of time weeding this summer, which was okay. Um, some areas I had to weed several times, but hopefully in future years that won't be the case. And I really love using grasses and sedges to fill everything in. Um, it's just like the visual impact that it gives. Um, so all in all, I feel like a worthwhile endeavor in my heart and a worthy way to spend my summer, at least off from the live shows. I have a plant called cup plant. It's currently about eight feet tall. In all its glory, it can live about 100 years old. I have two white oaks that I planted. I, I called them, I haven't named any of the other plants, but I called the two oaks. I called one Linus and one Lucy <laughs> from the peanuts. Um, and they will hopefully be providing nourishment to other wildlife through their leaves and acorns for, I mean, oaks can live hundreds of years. So I was really... I guess it was a new experience because, you know, in the 10 years of having this business, I just was constantly working like 80, 60, 80 hours a week or whatever I was working throughout the years. And like just to take a time to step back and think about other things like the planting, it kind of gave me a new perspective on sewing and um, I guess gave my brain a little bit of time to breathe and just sort of let new ideas happen as far as sewing patterns and demonstrations, which is sort of how tonight's demonstration for Bag Lab came about. So um, I guess thank you because, you know, years ago I used to get suggestions about taking, you know, breaks from the live shows over the summer or kind of 
the thing that stands out in my mind is uh, TV shows. I know things are different with Netflix now, but like in the olden days, TV shows generally would be off for the summer and there would be reruns over the summer. And so that's kind of how I've structured the live shows as far as the break for the summer. So I really appreciate you sticking with me over this break and tuning back into Social Sunday. I know it's um, it's something I'm definitely really grateful for. So um, thanks for listening to my, lo my long spiel about the native gardening. But um, I guess I just wanted to share with you a little bit about some of the things I've been working on over the summer. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments um, one fun thing that you did in the past three months while we were gone from the live shows. Maybe you went on a trip. Maybe you reconnected with some family. Maybe you um, did some personal growing for yourself, um, some extra sewing. Let me know in the comments um, one fun thing that you did in the past three months. All right, so the book review for tonight will be a book called zigzag rope sewing projects and I decided to choose this book for tonight's book review because um, I feel like every couple years on social media I see people making a bunch of rope projects or incorporating fabric into the rope projects and so when I came across this book I knew I definitely wanted to review it for the show so Danny's going to switch over to the overhead camera as for every sewing or quilting book the first section of the book is always going over materials and techniques and if you've never worked with rope or incorporated it into a project this book will definitely be really helpful the first big section is all on how to work with the ropes choosing sizes um how do what kind of stitches are required and also if you'd like to incorporate some of your fabric scraps into it this would be a really great way to use up some of your fabrics and it kind of gives the the fabric bowls or whatever the projects are a little bit of extra visual interest and uh all right so i'm going to flip through all the projects so they range from super easy like this coaster um and again you can always incorporate the fabric wrapping um either a little bit or a lot um here's an example of just a little bit of fabric added to just kind of like a little stripe in these little trinket bowls thought it was a really great idea and I think I really liked the ones with the fabric wraps in them you know I never would have thought about a place map but when I saw these especially with all the different colors of fabric woven into them I was like this is something I definitely have to make so I, I super love these they just look really rustic and fun something different Super simple, a braided headband. I also noticed that the earrings and the bracelet were also um, rope, although those projects are not in this particular book. Um, this bowl is dip dyed, so part of it's green. And as you can see, some other examples over here. Another fun idea. And this one is uh, colored with some speckles of paint. So these are drawer organizers, another fun idea. Something to keep uh, a house plant in. And then there's some also, there's some baskets and bowls with little details like these knotted handles. There's some braided ones later on. This one's a charging caddy with sort of a little slit over here for your um, charging cords to go through. A wall mobile. Kind of like these using some extra beads you might have on hand easter baskets and here's i feel like this is the most intricate project in the book um it's got this braid around the top edge looks super fancy to me hanging wall pockets um, by the way there's no pattern pieces in this just the instructions step-by-step -step photo instructions to make the projects and then I think this is my favorite project in the book, um, this colorful market tote um, with the different colors of uh, the cotton braids. So um, again, if you're interested in checking this out, I've linked to this book in the description. It's called Zigzag Rope Sewing Projects. And um, if you ever have a recommendation for me about a book that you think I should review on the show, feel free to email me anytime. In fact, a lot of books 
um, that I review on the show are recommendations from viewers. Um, Dawn says you could sew the placemats together and make a bag. That's a great idea too. That's a really great idea. Very interesting. All right, so um, Danny's favorite part of the show when he's not on it. We'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. Danny and I are both super grateful that you've tuned into the show and we really appreciate your support. So thank you so much. All right, Danny, are you ready? Ready for what? We are interrupting the show for a special report because now it is time for Bag Lab. All right, so the other day I was browsing through Facebook as one tends to do sometimes and I came across an ad. I do generally enjoy seeing Facebook ads because a lot of times there are things I need and um, I often buy things from Facebook ads. <laughs> I don't know if I should admit that or not, but um, I came across this ad. Danny's going to put a picture on the screen of a orange backpack. So I saw this ad and I was like, it looks at least the shape and the way that there's a front zippered pocket, it looks similar to the widget messenger bag. Uh, Danny's going to put a picture on the screen of the widget. I designed this bag a few years ago. All right, so there's the widget, as you can see, similar shape. Um, Danny's going to put the orange bags photo up on the screen one more time. So I wanted to do sort of a demonstration for how to add how to make a bag into a sling backpack and a sling backpack is just a backpack with a single strap like like that orange bag has. Um, so Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera really quick. So here's the finished portion of tonight's demonstration. So here's the, this is the back of the backpack and this is that really fun portion that you would see from the front so it'll be facing forward um, as you have it on your back but this was really easy to add I feel like it's a little bit um, more I don't want to say upscale looking but something a little bit nicer than just a plain strap I like this little accent piece very much and the reason for the two d-rings on the bottom is so you can switch sides with a swivel clip if you'd like to have it depending on which shoulder you'd like to have it on that's the reason for the two different D-rings. And um, this was fast and easy to put together. I've actually put together a PDF document, which you can download. It's free, just containing the single pattern piece. But we filmed um, a video yesterday showing how I put all this together. So Danny's going to play the video for you right now. If you have any questions during the video, feel, feel free to leave them in the comments. And I'll come back after the video and... I'll answer either questions about this tutorial or if you haven't had any other questions throughout the show, I'll be answering some questions live after the demonstration, so enjoy. Before we begin, you'll need to open and print the PDF pattern file using Adobe Reader. It's a free program that you can download to your computer or device if you don't already have it. So this is just a single page with just one pattern piece on it. And you'll notice there's a one inch square and a four centimeter square. You'll want to take your ruler and measure either of those squares to make sure they measure either exactly one inch or exactly four centimeters. Uh, they shouldn't measure slightly smaller or slightly larger. It needs to be exact. So you'll take your scissors and cut to the outside of the thick black line. And if you'll notice on this page, I've also got some other notations for which hardware will be needed for making the sling strap for a backpack. And I've also got some other pieces noted that will need to be cut out from your exterior fabric and your ShapeFlex interfacing. So, um, for example, for the strap piece, you'll be cutting out two strips, a 40 inch by six inch strip, and another that's 20 inches by six, six inches. We'll be sewing those right sides together. And let me show you this example um, in order to make a longer strap. So I'm going to take these, again, right sides together. And I'm, since my fabric is dark, I'm going to use chalk. And I'm just going to make a notation where this piece underneath ends. And I'm going to draw a diagonal line from this corner to the opposite corner. Okay, so we're going to take this over to the sewing machine. And we're going to stitch directly on top of the line using a regular stitch length and be sure to backstitch at start and stop. 
Once you've sewn those two pieces together, together, you'll press the seam open and you will have a single piece of your strap fabric and you will use that piece of fabric to cut your ShapeFlex interfacing. So you'll be cutting um, the ShapeFlex interfacing one inch shorter than the entire length of the strap and you'll be centering that. Um, so there will be a little bit extra length of the fabric showing on either side past the interfacing. And you'll go ahead and fuse the shape flex interfacing according to manufacturer instructions. So what I usually like to do is I like to have the fabric right side face down and then place the shape flex directly on top. The bumpy side of the shape flex is going against going to go against the wrong side of the fabric. And I have my iron set at the cotton setting. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it over all areas of the fabric for a few seconds until I've fused the entire length of the strap. And I usually like to do a little check to make sure the interfacing has properly adhered. And I like to take my fingernail and try to peel back a corner of the interfacing away from the fabric. If it easily peels away, you'll just need to iron a little bit longer. And if it's properly adhered, you can go ahead and attach the remaining shape flex interfacing to the other pieces um, as noted in this section over here on your PDF pattern file. You'll also need to attach the interfacing as called for in whatever pattern that you're working on. So for this particular example, I'm using the widget messenger bag and I have my piece of fabric attached to the interfacing as called for in the pattern and we'll be focusing on the piece that will be the back of the bag or the back of the backpack. So this is one of my exterior main panels from the widget pattern. And again, this is the piece that will be the back of the backpack or the piece that will rest on the person's back when they're holding the bag. Okay, now we're going to do some pressing on most of our pieces. So I'll show you how to do that, starting with the strap. So I'm going to flip the strap so that it is wrong side facing up and I'm going to take my ruler and draw a line that's half inch in from the short side edge. And you'll do the same thing for the opposite side as well, the other short end. And I'm going to press the fabric toward the wrong side at that half inch line that I drew. Now I'm going to fold the fabric wrong sides together in half so that both of the long edges meet. And you'll continue pressing the entire length of the strap piece. I'm going to open the fabric outward and I'm going to bring the lower edge up toward the center crease and press. I'm also going to bring that top edge down toward the center crease and press again. And again, you'll be pressing the entire length of the strap. Refold the fabrics and press one more time. Okay, so for the strap piece, you'll be taking this over to the sewing machine and top stitching both of the long edges an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. And for top stitching, I generally like to slightly increase my stitch length. So for this top stitching, I'll be increasing to three millimeters on my machine. So there's two other pieces, two other types of pieces um, that we'll also be pressing and top stitching. So the first is the lower strap extender. These are four inch by four inch squares and you should have two of them. They will both be pressed in the same manner. So first I'm going to flip to the wrong side and bring one, the bottom edge up toward the top and press. And this will be pressed almost the same like what we did with the strap. I'll bring the lower edge up toward the center crease and press again. And then I'll also bring the top edge to the center crease and press, as well as refolding the fabrics and pressing one more time. Okay, so you'll notice for this piece, you'll have a raw edge on either side. And same thing as with the strap, we'll be top stitching an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric on top and bottom. 
And again, there's, there's two of these lower strap extender pieces that are four inches by four inches. And there's one more type of piece and that's the upper strap extender. This one's three inches by six inches. I'm going to flip so that the wrong side is face up and for this piece I'm going to bring both of the short ends so that they meet and press. I'm going to bring the lower edge up toward the center crease, press again, same thing for the top edge, bring it toward the center crease, and then refold the fabric and press one more time. Okay, so for this piece also, we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric on top and bottom. And though we'll be doing the same top stitching for all of the types of pieces that I just showed, I'm gonna take this one over to the sewing machine and show you how I top stitch so that you can see what it looks like. Okay, and again, I'm going to be doing this top stitching using a slightly lengthened stitch length and in my machine, that'll be three millimeters. And you'll do the same thing for the two, or two lower strap extender pieces as well as top stitching your strap. Now take your lower strap extender out. This should be where you have the two pieces and the finished size should be one inch wide. We're actually gonna trim one inch off of this piece. And the reason that I'm having us trim is so that I could have you start with a four inch by four inch square where both sides are the same. Just it's just easier for pressing purposes. Okay, so you'll do the same thing for both pieces. And then you'll take out your one inch D-ring and we're actually going to slide the fabric onto the D-ring and fold it in half so that both of the raw edges are aligned. You'll do the same thing for both pieces and they will look like this. So now you'll pull out the piece that will be part of whatever pattern you're working on. This will be the back of the bag and I'm going to take my ruler and draw a line that's one inch up from the bottom edge and I'm just going to transfer it on both the left side and the right side no need to draw it straight across and I'm going to place each piece of fabric with the d-ring so that the raw edges of the fabric are aligned with the raw side edges and the bottom edge will be at that one inch line that we just drew Okay, same thing on the other side. And we're going to stitch this in place either side an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. And you'll do the same thing to attach the second portion with the D-ring. Now go ahead and cut out the two pieces that we cut from the pattern piece that was on the PDF. And we're going to place them right sides together. I'm going to pin the side and the top edges. We're going to sew the sides and the top using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to be sewing this using my regular stitch length and on my machine that's two and a half millimeters. I'm going to notch the curved edges, which means cutting a small V where the curves are, and the little Vs will be approximately a half inch away from each other. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this right side out and press. You can use either your fingers or a turning tool to gently push out the corners. And before pressing, I'm actually gonna put a couple wonder clips to hold the raw edges of, of the fabric in place. I'm gonna line the raw edges first and then put a couple of wonder clips in place. What this does is it helps the fabric spread evenly apart rather than kind of um, being a little bit offset when you go to press.
Okay, we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch the finished edge, and actually we'll be sewing all the way around the entire outer edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and I'm going to increase my stitch length to three millimeters for this top stitching. Now go ahead and pull out your upper strap extender and your metal rectangle and I'm going to go ahead and place the fabric through the rectangle and fold it in half so that both of the raw edges are aligned. So I'm going to place this piece of fabric so that it's centered along this bottom raw edge of um, the piece that we cut from the principal pattern piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and place it, and then I'm gonna take my ruler and measure from either side. It should be about an inch and a quarter in. So I'm gonna reposition my wonder clips in place. So we're going to be sewing first this left-hand side edge a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. Come as close to the purse hardware as you can um, comfortably with your press her foot, sew a horizontal line, and then come back um, down the other side. Now go ahead and pull out the piece that you previously attached, um, the fabric attached to the D-rings, and we're going to attach this piece with the metal rectangle. So the hardware should be face up, and we're going to align the raw edge of this piece that we printed out with the top edge of your bag piece. Um, again, this will be the, the back of your bag or your backpack. Okay, so besides having the raw edges aligned, I'm also going to make sure that it's centered. So again, whatever piece that you're using for whatever pattern that you're making, just go ahead and make sure it's centered along the top edge. Okay, so pin this in place, and we're going to take this over to the sewing machine, and we're going to sew this top pinned edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. One thing I wanted to mention, if your machine is having trouble dealing with this thickness up here, you can always omit this piece and just have this little um, square of fabric attached to the metal rectangle, have that by itself, because keep in mind, you'll still need to attach this uh, to the rest of the bag as you start assembling whatever pattern that you're working on. So now we're gonna start attaching the strap. So go ahead and take your strap piece out, and we're going to attach it to the swivel clip. And by the way, my hardware is not matching today. This is just the particular pieces that I happen to have on hand, um, but that's okay. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw a line that's one inch in from one of the short edges. I'm going to take this end and slide it onto the swivel clip. And I'm going to fold it back at that one inch line. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric and also a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. Now I'm going to draw a line with my ruler on the opposite end as the swivel clip that's two inches in. From the short end.
Okay, now go ahead and pull out this piece that we've been working on so far and the last bit of hardware, which is the metal slider. So I'll consider this the right side of the fabric, the side opposite where the fabric is fold over, folded over. So I'm going to slide the swivel clip on the right side of the fabric so that it looks like this. Then I'm going to slide this short end through the metal rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and pull that um, slider down a bit. And I'm going to push the fabric on either side up a little bit so that I have access to this middle bar over here. So I'm going to push this short end of the fabric on one side of the bar and then bring it down through the opposite side so that it looks like this. So this is the piece that I, that I threaded through. So I'm going to pull it through until I reach that two inch marking that I made. I'm going to position that two inch marking where that middle bar is and then I'm going to fold the fabric back onto itself. So what I mean by that is this is the piece over here that I threaded through and we're going to fold it down just like that. Okay, so feel free to move the fabric out of the way. And we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew an eighth of an inch away and also a quarter of an inch away. And we're not sewing through this piece at all, just through these two layers right here. Okay, so this portion is actually finished. You can go ahead and start assembling the bag or backpack according to whatever pattern that you're working on. So this piece over here, when the back bag or backpack is finished, this will be sort of flipped up so that this will be visible from the front or the right side of the bag or the backpack. And the reason that we have the two D-rings over here is so you can clip this swivel clip onto either end depending on which shoulder you would like to carry the bag on. Um, I guess one more note that I have is if you'd like to secure these D-rings a little bit better, you can top stitch about a, a half an inch away from the hardware, um, making sure to back stitch. Same thing for this piece. So you won't be sewing it through the actual body of the bag, just this piece over here. And it just, what this does is it just helps prevents the D-rings from kind of sliding up and down. Um, that part's completely optional, but just in case you'd like to do it, um, just know that that is an option. And this is just a really easy way to sort of give an upscale look to um, a bag that might not already be a backpack, but perhaps you'd like to turn it into a sling backpack. Or if you have a backpack that already comes with two straps that you would like to kind of play around with and turn it into a single strap backpack. This is a nice way to do that as well. So again, um, if you'd like to check out the PDF document, you can um, save, download, and print that out and um, turn any bag or backpack into a single strap sling. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration on how to make any, just about any bag into a sling backpack. I did notice while I was sitting here looking at my little sewn sample, I have a little diagonal stitch. Danny, would you mind switching to the overhead camera like a, a close zoom, if you will? Thank yeah, you. Close. Thank you. So this area over here, see how there's like a little diagonal stitch? I actually have, uh, I guess I did not follow my own instructions, but I do have a video on my YouTube channel showing how to avoid that. So if you go to the So Sweetness YouTube channel and type in skip stitch in the search box, that video will show up. It's just something super simple that you can do to avoid that when you're sewing sort of a, a pivot corner like that. So um, check that out if you're interested after the show. Um, and I think Danny said he there were a few questions about uh, this uh, tutorial so I'm gonna answer those questions first before we get over to uh, the rest of the questions for tonight let's see Betty says how do you get the original widget backpack pattern uh, good question Betty Marie I actually have 
uh, link to the widget messenger bag pattern in the description. It's not a free pattern. It's uh, for purchase, either the PDF or the PDF with the video. And I've linked to that um, in the description in case you're interested in that. Oh, thanks, Shinova. Shinova also has that uh, link on the screen as well. Um, life is so boring without your live shows, but I managed to survive. Thank you so much. That is so sweet of you to say. Maribel says, would this pattern fit a 15 inch laptop? Let me grab my ruler. I'm going to guess no. So this piece in front of me, granted, I'm not including the seam allowance, is 11 and a quarter high by eight and three quarters wide. Again, that's just the size of this piece. So you would need to increase the pattern or perhaps choose a different pattern. Um, if you wanted to increase the size of the widget pattern, I do have a free video discussing how to increase or decrease the pattern. So you can find that on my YouTube channel or on my website in case you're interested in that as well. And Kim says, I wonder if you can do this with the Marlin backpack. I do not have a Marlin up here on my set, but um, I don't see why you couldn't. Seems like it would be perfectly reasonable to me. Um, Kathy says, filling up my shopping cart with So Sweetness products. Thank you very much, Kathy. Kelly says, question, do rivets hold better than sewing the hardware on or is sewing them bettered? It depends. If you if your fabric thickness and your sewing machine will allow you to do both, sew and then attach the rivets, I would suggest doing both. Sometimes you might be working with a fabric that's super thick. For instance, um, this adjustable strap that I was talking about where I, I folded it back and then sewed it through both layers of the strap. If it's super thick and you just can't get it stitched through with your sewing machine, having rivets, maybe two rivets over here, maybe folding back the, the fabric a little bit farther so you have room for the rivets, but um, rivets or Chicago screws are a good alternative if something like this, you just can't manage to get it under your machine to stitch it. Uh, were there any more? Uh, oh, thank you very much, Tam. Tam says fabulous demo. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, I, I've, I don't think I've ever done um, a demonstration where I see a store-bought bag and I'm like, oh, how could I modify one of my patterns to make it look like that? Uh, but it was kind of exciting for me. So if you have any suggestions similar to that that I can work on in future for another demonstration on Social Sunday, feel free to email me. Again, uh, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Danny's going to drop my email address at the bottom of the screen. Were you going to say something, Danny? No? Okay. Okay, so um, I will answer a few more questions. There's some other questions, I'm assuming, Danny, besides questions about that tutorial. Oh, I wanted to, this is from the Facebook earlier today, and it really cracked me up, uh, so I wanted to read it on the show. Um, in the So Sweetness Facebook group, Patty mentioned, she had a post, she said, for my fabric hoarding family here, have you bought fabric with a project in mind and then when you go through your fabric like I am doing now, you can't remember what project, nor can you figure out why you would buy such ugly fabric in the first place? <laughs> that really cracked me up, but I know exactly how that feels because once in a while I'll refold fabric or I'll put stuff away and I'll resort a pile and I'll look through some of the older fabric and I'll be like, that fabric is so ugly. Why would you buy that fabric, Sarah? I would say that doesn't apply to the vast majority of my stash, but once in a while I'm like, what is this fabric and what what even were you going to do with it? So thanks, Patty, for the, the little giggle you gave me earlier today. Um, oh, thanks, Carrie. Carrie says, don't forget uh, the like or the thumbs up. Thank you very much. Yeah, the likes, subscribes, comments, that all helps us out very much, so thank you. Janet says, huh, do you have new scissors? Where are your Kai, I think? No, I don't have new scissors. These are, maybe they look different on camera. Um, these are my favorites, Kai number 7205. I've had them for, I don't even know, it must be almost 10 years. I actually have two pair because one time I lost it, or I thought I lost my scissors, so I had to order a second pair, and then I later found them, which is always the case, of course, but um, they're fabulous. I've only had them sharpened one time. Um, if you ever need to have your scissors, or knives or other things like that of the sort sharpened. There's a website called simplysharper.com and you just send in your stuff, they sharpen it and send it back to you. 
Um, they were nice and sharp. Um, I had them sharpened probably five or so years ago, so still extremely sharp. Um, Barbara says, what thread size do you use? Um, I like using 40 weights thread for bag making. I like Aurifil 40 weight thread. Um, if you prefer using a polyester thread, that's perfectly fine as well. Um, once in a while, I will use a 50 weight thread for bag making if I have. My thread stash is sort of a mix of 40 weight thread and 50 weight thread just because I've purchased a lot of the Tula Pink thread boxes and those are generally 50 weight and so, or I think they probably all are 50 weight, all the Tula boxes. And so that's why I have a mixture and I will once in a while use a 50 weight thread um, if I have it in a certain color that I need. Um, Linda says, how is your horse? Did you ride a lot this summer? I did ride a lot this summer and that's actually my, Linda guessed it, my part two of my summer update, which I will update maybe in a couple weeks or so, depending on when I can get my thoughts together for that. Um, it was a fabulous time riding. We had a bunch of breakthroughs recently, so I'm excited to update you about that sometime on the show soon. Janet says, I love the Chickadee backpack, but was wondering what substrates to use to make it lighter. By the time I fill it up, I can hardly carry it on the plane. That is a good question. I did make my Chickadees with quilting cotton, which I guess is sort of on the light side. Now it rips off. Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe rip stop? You know, the interfacing I don't know. I guess I'll have to think about that. But if if you're watching live and you have a thought about Janet's question, feel free to leave a comment. Danny will try to look out for that and put it up on the screen. It's a tough call because the interfacings used really lend to the structure. And I'm assuming that's the interfacing is the main perpetrator of maybe the initial weight when it's empty. So I don't know. That's a tough one. Um, storage recommendations for Aurifil thread. I do have, my desk is from Ikea. I cannot remember the drawer configuration name. Danny, do you Alexa. remember? What is it? Lexa. Lexa. He says, Danny says it's Lexa. So Alexa. Alexa. In my top drawers, I purchased spice rack, not organizers, trays, I guess, from Amazon. So the trays hold that. I actually, we did a video a few years ago talking about my sewing room, I guess, remodel. Um, let me know if you have trouble finding that video on YouTube. I'm assuming if you type in sewing room in the Sew Sweetness YouTube channel, that video will pop up. I show everything in my sewing room, including those drawers, if you're interested in actually seeing those. Um, but that's what I use. Um, in previous years, I used uh, sort of like a desktop um, rack, like a wooden rack to hold the spools. I like that just fine. But once I had the extra storage space, I kind of like having the, the spools out of the way. So those are a couple of options. Uh, Windless Original says, welcome back. Wondering if you have any plans for Halloween inspired zipper pulls or zipper decorations. We do have, I haven't listed them on the website. I should have a, a few weeks ago. We do have some of those new zipper charms in, in Halloween and Christmas themed zipper charms. If you recall, the zipper charms had the little lobster clasps and they came in packs of like two or three designs per card. Um, so I'll try to get those up on the website tomorrow. As far as just our regular zipper pulls, I do have, it's not Halloween themed, but I guess it's could possibly work. It's like a moon and stars pull. I don't think I have it up here. Um, but you can find that on our website under the zipper pull section if that sounds like something you might be interested in. Those zipper charms, when I list them, will also be in the zipper pull section of the shop. Um, Terry says the backpacks are just fabrics, no zippers, correct? Uh, that's correct. So the backpacks are just the two one yard cuts of the fabrics. I do have links in most of the backpack product listings in case you'd like to purchase the coordinating zipper tapes separately, but the corks and the zipper tapes are sold separately. The backpacks are just for the, the two yards of the fabric. Sherry says, I enjoyed the show in the demo. I remembered your return date because it was my birthday too. Well, happy birthday to you as well, Sherry. Um, it's so funny because I, I, looking through the Facebook group recently, I see a lot of people remembered the return date as well. Um, I hope you had some fun on your birthday, Sherry, and hope you did um, something nice for yourself as well. 
Um, chickadee answer, a lot of the time the bag hardware gets heavy. Try to use plastic zippers and thinner metal or even plastic rings, hooks, etc. That's a fantastic reply to that question. The question was about um, um, they loved the chickadee backpack but found it was really heavy once it was stuffed with everything and that hardware, I love the response. Um, just try to use either lighter hardwares or if you can find plastic versions of the hardware, which I think in a lot of cases you probably could um, go for that option as well. Amanda says, placed my first order several weeks ago. Great products and fast shipping. Thank you. Well, thanks so much for your support, Amanda. My, my mom and dad do all the shipping um, on the invoices. They like to differentiate who packed the order. So generally, if my mom's packing an order, she'll write thank you or she'll write something in her nice handwriting on the invoice. And my dad has uh, different handwriting. So my dad, we got my dad a stamp. <laughs> It says, Dan, you remember what the stamp says? Something about thank you from the Lawson family. Yep. Something like that. Uh, so you'll know who packed the order based on if you got a stamp or um, a handwritten thank you. <laughs> Are you calling in on the questions, Danny? Yep. I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but I will be back again next Sunday answering more questions. Danny will be joining me on next yeah, Sunday's show yeah, as well. Yeah, so yeah, one last yeah, thing to get to is the giveaway for tonight. Uh, the giveaway, I decided to put together a mystery box of fabric patterns, books. So whatever fits in the box, I'm going to stuff it full. And um, it will be for one randomly drawn winner. Um, if you're new around here, the giveaways are randomly drawn. You have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave a comment on the show wherever you're watching, either on Facebook or YouTube. You don't have to be a live viewer. You can um, comment on the show anytime during the week until end of day Saturday. I will announce the winner of the giveaway um, randomly drawn on next Sunday's show. And um, I have an extra bonus question for you that you can answer in the comments for an extra method. Um, since we're talking about modifications to patterns tonight, what is a modification you've made when making a bag? Perhaps you always add a zipper pocket. Perhaps you like to add slip pockets or add credit card slots. Let me know in the comments um, a modification that you have made when making a bag or bags if you've used that modification several times. Thank you so much for tuning in to our sort of welcome back Social Sunday show. I had a fantastic time. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.